Hey guys, happy Monday. Hope everybody's doing well out there today. Uh, over the weekend, I put out a poll uh, on the channel's uh, community tab over here uh, asking uh, what you guys wanted to see next. And pretty much overwhelmingly, uh, with 200 votes, 39%, which was the majority, asked for Pi Hole. So that's what we're gonna focus on today. I'm gonna show you how to set up a Pi Hole as a network based ad blocker. We're not gonna touch DHCP or anything like that. Uh, just because I'd have to really mess up my network to make that work. So what I am going to do, though, uh, is show you how to set up uh, Pi-hole as a network-based ad blocker. So uh, let's go ahead and jump over here. Uh, here we can see there's that poll. Uh, you guys also had some other uh, some other good ideas down here that I will definitely touch on later. Um, but uh, you guys asked for Pi-hole, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and close this. Uh, right here, uh, this is the, uh, again, the gist or the gist, uh, whatever you want to call it here. I'm just going to go ahead and open this up. I will have a link to this in the description down below. Uh, so you can go ahead and copy and paste this. Uh, so we're just going to copy that. Uh, we're going to come over here to stacks in Portainer. Uh, we're going to add a new stack, and then we're just going to paste this in here. And of course, then we're going to give it a name. And then we're gonna talk about kind of what's going on here and why I've done some of the things that I've done. So again, version two, services, pie hole, container name, pie hole, image, pie hole latest, uh, all that is very standard. That's almost always at the top of our stacks. <clears throat> Below that we've got ports. Uh, we've got a TCP uh, and a UDP for port 53. Uh, 53 is what our, uh, what DNS runs on. Uh, UDP is for when you, when the system expects a very quick, like this shouldn't take any time or any resources at all. If that doesn't work, then TCP comes in, takes over uh, for those more uh, complicated or more, uh, more resource intensive tasks. Uh, so that's why we use both of those. Uh, I've commented out port 67 again, because we're not using DHCP, uh, we're not going to use this as a DH DHCP device. We don't need that. So I'm just gonna comment that out. Uh, port 80, uh, well, I've got 83 right here. Uh, basically that's the, the port that we're gonna use to access our dashboard. Uh, so we're gonna use uh, 83 for that because I've already got uh, port 81 for Open Media Vault and port 82 for Nginx Proxy Manager. So we're gonna put port 83 here for Pi-hole. Uh, below that, we've got port 443. We can't actually use 443 uh, because we're using Nginx Proxy Manager uh, and we're doing this in Docker. Um, but basically 443 uh, is for uh, ads that use SSL. It's an additional sinkhole for those. Uh, but again, because we're using uh, Docker, we've already got 443 reserved for Nginx Proxy Manager. We just can't use it. Uh, below that, we've got environment. Uh, our time zone for me was Denver. So I've gone ahead and put that in there. Uh, this web password, that's going to be the password that you'll use uh, to access the dashboard. Uh, you can turn that off later if you want to, uh, so that there is no password. You can change it, do whatever you want to do with that. Um, but that's the, the password we're going to use uh, when we first log into the dashboard. Below that, we're, we're telling it to use uh, these as its DNS. Uh, we're going to use uh, Cloudflare's DNS uh, with their 1.1.1.1 and 1.0.0.1. Um, and we're going to use DNSSEC uh, just for a little added security there as well. Uh, and then we've got volumes. Uh, these uh, basically right here, this part right here, uh, we created an open media vault uh, when we first started this series. So we should have, you know, SRV, dev, disk, by label, files, config. That should already be in your system if you've been following along. Uh, if not, you can just go over uh, to open media vault and create uh, this config folder for your, uh, for your setup. And then you'll just want to map uh, a pi hole and then slash etc pi hole and uh, etc DNS mask q.d. Uh, those are different folders that pi hole needs to run. We've got to mount those somewhere. So I put those in our configuration folder. Um, <clears throat> we don't really need this cap net, uh, net admin. Uh, this again is for DHCP stuff. We're going to leave it, but we don't necessarily need it. And then restart unless stopped. Uh, you could put this as unless stopped or always, whichever one of those you want to do, perfectly fine. Uh, but that's basically all we need in order to deploy this container. So uh, let's go ahead and click on deploy there. It says port 53 is already in use. And that's because by default, uh, Raspbian has port 53 in use for resolving DNS. So we need to fix that. Uh, so what we're going to do uh, is I'm going to come down here. I've got... Uh, I'm already logged in right here to uh, to Hal. Uh, that's my my little Raspberry Pi uh, server that I'm working on here. Uh, so what I need to do is uh, let's minimize the window down here. 
first thing that we need to do is um, stop uh, the resolver there. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in there. Again, all this will be available uh, linked in the description down below. Okay, so let's go ahead, oops, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so let's try that again. I actually don't have root set up now that I think about it. So let's log in as pi. There we go. Uh, so now let's see if we can't stop that. There we go. So a little bit of a process to make that stop. That's fine. We've gone ahead and stopped uh, the resolver there. The next thing we need to do uh, is actually edit the resolver uh, so that it's not uh, trying to do things automatically. And again, uh, the stuff I've got that I'm gonna copy here will be available uh, in the description down below. <clears throat> so what we wanna do is, is edit this resolve area right here. Um, so this DNS, uh, we're gonna set this to 1.1, oops, .1.1.1, like so. Uh, the fallback DNS, just in case, uh, oops, .0.0.1, like so. And then we need to come down uh, to uh, the very bottom here, like so, we're gonna, and I'm just gonna copy and paste this in. Like so, uh, so basically what we're saying here is, hey, quit trying to figure things out on your own. You're gonna use these DNS resolvers. So we'll go ahead and press control O and then enter to save. And then we're gonna exit that. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna paste this in here uh, basically. And that command already ran. Uh, we're going to do a symbolic link uh, of the file that we just uh, modified to make it work. Uh, so basically that's all we're gonna do there. Uh, and then we should be able to Go ahead and run this again over here in uh, uh, Portainer. Sorry, had a moment there. Um, but so now Pi-hole is running theoretically, so it's starting. Let's go ahead and open this up. Uh, so it looks like it's uh, executing some stuff here. Uh, this is good. It's gonna go through its process of downloading and configuring everything. It looks like just that quickly. Yep, services.d means it's done. Uh, so what we'll do is go to stacks. Uh, we'll go to Pi-hole. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and click on port 83 right here. And nothing, because we've got to add admin to that. Not a big deal. Like so. And then we can go ahead and get logged in here. And remember, uh, I used password. So now we're using Pi-hole, or rather, Pi-hole is set up. We're not using Pi-hole yet. What I want to do is open up my network and internet settings. Now, you can do this on a device-by-device -device basis, whether you want to set this uh, up to point your computer, your phone, your tablet. You can set all of those individual devices to do that, to point to the Raspberry Pi or you can just set your router to point to the Raspberry Pi and have all of your devices covered automatically. Uh, however you wanna do that is perfectly fine. Uh, I am gonna do, do it just on this one device here uh, because I've already got my router set up to point to a different Pi hole uh, device here. So what I'll do is click on properties, go to here, uh, DNS, I'm gonna say uh, 192.168.68.126. Uh, let, me, let me verify that, I wanna make sure that I do have that correct. So I'm just going to ping Hal. Uh, there we go, 68.126, that was correct. So I'll go ahead and say okay, and okay, and close, and close, and close. And here we've got five queries. So what I'm gonna do right here where you can see these white boxes in the middle, there'd be ads there, uh, there'd be an ad across the bottom, there'd actually be an ad across the bottom of the scrolling part of the screen. There'd be ads everywhere here, um, but because uh, we're using Pi Hole over here. I'm just gonna go ahead and refresh one more time so you can see that number uh, come up even more. Uh, let's go over to like, uh, uh, let's go to uh, uh, Times, oops, Time Magazine. Let's see, there we go. So there we just, we're watching this jump up even more uh, as we scroll through. Uh, we should see that uh, continue to jump. Uh, so there we go, let's look at, uh, Fox.com, that's probably not what I wanted. I probably wanted Fox News. Uh, just so I can be fair and balanced as far as uh, where I'm going here, uh, you can see these numbers surge uh, every time uh, I go to a new, uh, a new place here. These numbers are skyrocketing. So that tells us that Pi-hole is working on our Raspberry 
Pi. There you go, guys. There's a uh, Pi hole in Docker. It's a very simple process to get up and running. Uh, there was a couple of additional steps we had to go through uh, to make everything work. But if you follow along with the video, you shouldn't have any issues uh, getting this to work. Uh, and then of course, point your devices, whether it's your individual devices or your router, whatever you want to point to, or, or whatever you want to manipulate there to point to this. Just, it works very, very well. Of course, you can add uh, additional uh, block lists and all kinds of different things in here to really uh, tweak this to make your network work the way you want it to work. A lot of work in there. Anyway, so uh, with all that being said, what I am gonna do though, uh, like I did over the weekend, I'm gonna have a poll linked in the community tab once this video goes live, asking what you guys wanna see next. I'll have some different options in there. Uh, I'll, of course, I'll have the, some of the same options in there as well uh, so that we can uh, kind of let this be a community decision to decide what we wanna watch on the channel next. I can do these all days, but of course I'm looking out for you guys and I wanna help kind of build a community here where you guys have a voice in what content comes across on the channel. So like I mentioned before, everything that we talked about today will be available in the uh, description down below. Uh, there's also a couple of other links down there if you wanna support the channel. One of them is a one-time tip jar, which, which would be like coffee. Also uh, Patreon, uh, you guys who, who have been patrons uh, for the months, I've seen some of you come and go and come and go and some of you are new and I appreciate all of you for supporting me. Uh, I, it really does mean the world to me that you guys are willing to support my content. Uh, very cool, and thank you guys for all of that. If you wanna become a patron, there will be a link in the description down below as well. Also, I wanna kinda of thank our corporate sponsors here, Canakit for sending over the Raspberry Pi uh, that we did all of this on, uh, Argon40 for sending over the case we're using, Sabret for using or for sending over uh, the two terabyte drive and the enclosure, as well as uh, Porkbun for giving you guys 99 cent dot click and dot link domains uh, using the code D tech when you check out. Uh, there are a limit of three per customer, but uh, Cheap Domains, a uh, very cool company. In fact, a lot of cool companies helping out with this. So thanks to everybody, uh, all the different corporations helping us out there. Thanks to you guys for watching. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.